Mm -hmm. Alright. Bye. First off. Hello?
Did it because you saw uh, um, the house cards? And that's why. No, I got it. <laughs> <clears throat> Hi, I'm Johnson. I'm from Boston University. I'm the vice Post president of the Video Game Club. Oh, great. Welcome. So, what, what's your name again? Johnson. Johnson? Yes. Um, I guess senior. I am um, great. Even though I'm a major, it's not game related, but you might play these things. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right, take him here. Great. I think it's called Duo. Duo? Duet. Duet, sorry. Duet, okay, yeah. Oh. That's, I saw it taxi <laughs> last year. I was like, oh, it's on iOS now. I'm going to play it. It's like, strangely comforting. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, I'm Matt. Uh, I'm a junior here at Emerson, WFP. Uh, and lately I've been playing um, a certain amount of time like that. So I'm playing that. Uh, but you've already beaten it? Yeah, I just haven't played it in like years. So. Are you playing it with female Shepherd? I am because Jungle Hill is the best. So. Okay, good. Good choice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> hey, my name is Allison. I'm a freshman WLP. And right now I'm working on uh, Don't Starve, Always, Final mm -hmm. Fantasy XIII, and I got to try a game called Black, uh, Black Hat Oculus recently. It's so cool. Can you say a little bit about that? Um, Black Hat Oculus is still in development because it's a game for the Oculus Rift, which is technically not like super commercially available yet. Mm -hmm. um, the Oculus is such a specific system right now because they, they're still trying to figure out its limits and obviously, you know, if you try to put in a hole, like, you're flying or you're running around a battlefield mechanics or graphics to it, you're going to get sick really, really easily. Like, I was on the machine for half an hour before I felt really sick. What is the game like? What is Black Hat like? Um, Black Hat is like a maze runner game mm -hmm. where you are... It's two player, first of all, which is very cool. One person controls the computer, and it's framed as if it's the matrix. One person is outside of the matrix, um, guiding you through this maze, because they can see the outline of a whole maze. They can see trap doors where you cannot see them. They can see where the bad guys are looking from. And the person inside the office is like inside the matrix. They can run around through the maze, trying to collect treasure. They can't see the trap door, so you guys have to work in conjunction to try to solve the puzzle and escape. Great. Awesome. Thanks for that. Uh, I'm Zach. I'm a freshman general production major. Here? At Emerson? At Great. And uh, recently I've been playing uh, Kentucky Zero. And, well, I've never really like, like played these sort of like more indie games, so this is like uh, a new experience. Cool. Think about games. Yeah. There's a great uh, entry. Cool. Uh, I'm Matthias. I'm a freshman in the media major. Uh, and I've been uh, watching competitive uh, melee recently. A lot last night. It kind of bugs you. Sorry. Yeah. You have a tournament this Sunday? Oh, really? Yeah. Is it like kind of fun to watch? You can. You can watch on stream. Wish that to you that. Switch that to you last time you know. I will. Did well, you get in touch with uh, um, Alex Ron again? He runs the University of Sports. I think they're coming. Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah. We have about 200 players. Oh, what is the one of which uh, you were all in? Twitch.tv slash N E Melee. If you send me that information, I can send it to you. Yeah, you should. I'd rather just be the asshole that like, waits in the corner until everyone else is dead. Oh, uh, <laughs> go, go ahead. That's these, guys, these guys are very competitive. What is it again? It's called Boss 2. Boston versus Smash Tournament 2. When is it? Oh, this wow. Saturday. 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 Cool. Yeah, I'll send it. You send me that information. Yeah, I can send it to everybody. That'd be great. Alright. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm Ben. Um, I'm a freshman um, BMA major here at Emerson. Um, I. Yeah, I've currently been playing. I've been playing Borderlands pre sequel with my roommate. Very fun. Um, yeah. So that's yeah. Good.
Okay, um, my name is Sarah. I'm a sophomore and I'm the gaming major here at Emerson. Um, recently, I've been, I, well, I picked up the longest journey game because I kind of put it down and wasn't playing it. And my friends forced me to play New Vegas so she could laugh at me. Um, so that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Great, awesome. I'm Catherine. I'm a junior interactive media major at Emerson. And I've recently been playing Love again and also Passage, the kind of the two games. I'm kind of taking inspiration from for a final project I'm doing cool. right now. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. It's not the really short game that starts out with, like, are you a boy or a girl? Are you a boy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My name's Liam Collins. I'm a. Oh, 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 no, that's fine. That's fine. Go ahead. Oh, we're going like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got it. I got it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not going to forget you guys. I'm <laughs> Liam. Uh, so, currently a sophomore at WLP here at Emerson College and playing a lot of Bloodborne and a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! on the Dueling Network app, so, yeah, yeah. the monsters. <laughs> uh, I'm Jess. I am a sophomore at WLP. I am one of the people who runs the Tabletop Club here at Emerson. There's a Tabletop Club at Emerson? Yeah. I don't know about this. We're not a senior organized, but there's like, there's like, 40, 40 people or something. Yeah. 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 Trying to learn how to control their powers and get a date for the prom. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm working on a campaign for another Apocalypse World hat called Night Witches, in which you play a Soviet air woman in World War II. And it's awesome. Cool. So, That's yeah. cool. Yeah, make sure, like, let me know about things that happen in that fun. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's talk later about that. Um, I'm Becca. I'm a sophomore WLP major at Emerson. Um, I haven't played any games recently, um, but I'm really excited about Final Fantasy XV. Okay, thanks, you first. So yeah. Um, I'm Kayla. I am a freshman WLP major at Emerson. Um, I spent about three hours playing Bioshock Infinite today for the first time. Um, I've been playing through the whole series for the last month or so because I've now played. And it's like, well, obviously, I need to be an educated gamer. <laughs> and, um, uh, the other one that I've been playing is Hot for Boyfriends, which is Fate <laughs> Pigeons. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's an eye opening experience to who you are and who pigeons are. Great. Awesome, guys. Well, uh, for those who haven't been here before, welcome. And for those who are trying to take time back. Um, so, uh, just to give a brief overview before we really delve into it, because I don't want to go into the essay yet, but I just want to give you a brief overview. Robert Yang is a designer uh, from New York City. Uh, he's one of my favorite designers right now. Um, and he is doing this project where he actually was trying to, again, like that prompt question I, I set out from the beginning is, is what if we thought about games, um, so it's sex and games, that's something you do and not obtain, right? Because we think about a lot of times, Intimacy, romance, sex in games. It's usually as positioned as a reward for a quest, right? Like, can we think about games that do that? Harvest Moon. Harvest Moon. How? <laughs> like, you get married to, uh, well, in the 64 one, which I have, you get married to a uh, lady uh, if you, like, work hard enough to, like, I guess so, like, better. Yeah, to, like, <laughs> uh, other super aspects. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, that's great. So, Mass Effect. Okay, how Mass Effect? I mean, Mass Effect, you start up, there is a, like, depending on which game it is, there is, like, a number of romantic, like, interests, whether you're a male chef or a female chef. Mm -hmm. And you, over the course of the game, you're able to um, basically go in, there are romantic, like, subplots, depending on how, how covered on you are and how renegade you are. And over time, that, that intimacy turns to romance, and ultimately, in the first game, there's like two characters you can have sex with, then it's like there's like four, and the second one, so on mm -hmm. and so forth. Like the sex is like that ultimate kind of reward for getting through the quest line, even though there is dialogue that comes subsequently. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah. And so like Mass Effect and Dragon Age are great examples of games that are trying to push the boundaries of like you know it's not just about 
heterosexual relationships, right? We're not trying to do something that it's, it, they are they are like doing something that's interesting and, and inclusive, but it's still framed as like do the right thing, do the right choices, and then you get the sex. It's like that's not really how it works in real, the real life, real world, right? Um, and it's also not necessarily how it works in or should work in games. Um, or at least that's my opinion. Um, is there any other games? Well, so my, some good examples of like kind of both sides of that are. The Sims does a good job of having it where it is something you do, but it's also a reward. And the reward is really just based on relationships. Mm -hmm. um, so you really do have to get to know somebody. And it also was one of the first games, I think, that did not, did not force you into like a, a hetero uh, relationship, mm -hmm. which was like huge, you know, 15 years ago. And then on the other side of the coin, it was God of War. Yeah. It was very much like a reward, and it was kind of disgusting the way they did it. Yeah, there's plenty of games that that's, are kind of different words. Yeah, it's plenty. <laughs> there's plenty of games I think that that are horrible representations of yeah. of you know sexist uh, imagery, like horrible depictions of women. I mean, you know, I think that a lot of you probably are familiar with uh, Anita Sarkeesian's work, and if you're not, that's a great starting point for that. Um, but I think it's interesting, right? So I'll talk about these games, right, that, that do this as, as a reward structure. And, and The Sims, right, is interesting because it's you're saying it's like a reward, but it's also a um, it's you know, an it's activity something you, and reward. Yeah, so like you get the activity a lot. You have to do you have to do a certain set of tasks, and then you get to do it. But you know, it's very it's kind of comical the way that does it. And I actually they actually did a pretty good job of representing you know what it is because it's so cartoon like. Yeah, and yet it is something you really have to work for in a quasi-realistic manner. You can't just like, you know, it's not it's not like the God of Wars of the world. Yet it's not like this misogynistic, disgusting thing. Yeah. So I think it's a good example, <laughs> kind of like the, a good way to handle it. Yeah, but I want to push on that though because I want to, I, and this will launch us right into the game because I want to get playing. But uh, just the idea of even in The Sims, like what are your what you're actually doing mechanically? Like what exact what are you actually doing, which makes it oh. what are the actual sex things, right? And, and I think that's there are probably other games that really do that, but you know I think Robert's kind of pushing on this boundary that not many people have have been taking up. Some other indie developers are though. But well, I think that's interesting about The Sims compared to like all the other examples that we've talked about is that like that's the only game really where like sex occurs in a place where it's not like in a fixed narrative point, like mm -hmm. it's not serving some larger. Function uh, in the story, sure. Regardless of how like you know appropriate or inappropriate those those depictions are, pretty much all those others serve some sort of you know even tangential point or connection to larger narrative. Whereas in the Sims, it's just something that happens in, the, in their lives. It's not meant to fulfill some larger narrative. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I think I think you're right. I, I think like. I think I think the idea then is to like we're at that point right where where we can do good representation we can do it so it's not just a fixed fixed state right but but how, what about how do we do it when how do we make it mechanical like how do we actually embody that kind of intimacy without it being you know gross or disgusting and and how do we do interesting mechanical things so I want to think about that while we play this next game so if you guys want to um, when you guys want to just take that mouse and then open up, it should be open down here. I want you to open, uh, uh, go to the finder actually, and now just hurt, open her uh, And then you can you can play it with that. It's fine. So this game is about. Well, I'm actually not going to say anything. I want you to actually be, watch, watch, why don't you watch it? So, what I want you to do is watch the screen and watch what Matthias is doing and try to think about what you're doing here. Thank <laughs> you. 
I it. wonder why. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, like another thing, just like in Dragon Age, like for instance, like I'll be, I'll admit, like the whole sex concept was new in a game. Like for instance, if you're romancing someone, you can once you get to a certain point, you can just have sex with them as many times as you want, over and over again, with no consequences, and it's not like they have any feelings. But in a game like this, it kind of simulates feelings almost, and it holds you accountable for your actions. Whereas in other games, you just can do whatever because it, they're just computer characters. Yeah. It, like, I don't know, like, I, it, I think it's really interesting that you could really, or the, the AAA space really isn't equipped to have a mechanic like that where you just flat out deny game access to the player, and it's almost like that's strictly limited to this, like, shareware free to distribute model because how else can you justify, like, oh, I paid 60 bucks, but I can't play this game for nine days. What the hell? Like, it, it's interesting that it kind of, it, it highlights something that only can be explored in this space. That's a good point. Yeah, good stuff. It uh, reminds me a lot of this game called Consensual Torture Simulator by Merit Cookness, which came out last year. I don't know if anybody's played that, but it's a game about it's a twine game about this sort of thing, and you have the whole negotiating, you know, boundaries before, and then you have the actual, you know, like sex scene, and then it's and it got a lot of attention at the time. It was even like covered by the New York Times and stuff. Um, but the thing, the thing, it was a lot of the discussion around that game was centered around that game as being about violence, and rather than being about sex, even though it was like a sexual game. So I wonder. That's the first question that that came to mind watching this: is is this a game about sex or is this a game about violence? Interesting. Well, that's a good question. What do you guys think? Why didn't you stop? That's Why a good question. Stop? Yeah. I wanted to see uh, what Robert wanted us to. See when we. I mean, I wanted. I wanted to see what, like he was. He had in mind. I wanted to see what he was thinking the game was about. So I think it's a good question. So wait, if we reopen the executable, it's still gonna say okay. 
gosh, I tried. There's no way to over. There's no way to. I bet there's a way to overwrite that, but I never said like I bet it's not exposed. Yeah. Um, obviously, the way to change it is the clock, right? But 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 that's not the point, right? The point is the message. Go ahead. Um, in terms of being like sex or violence, I think it's about the point where sex becomes violence, or at least in this kind of like domination yeah. submissive context, because mm -hmm. I think that you know it it is at least like virtualizing a sexual process. If you did listen to him and just go soft or whatever, like that is emulating a sexual act. But then when you don't stop and keep going, that then transgresses and becomes a violent act. So yeah. it's both. So it's about where the line between sex and violence is. Yeah. I wonder if that reasoning though, I just I was just curious. It's the same reason why a lot of people go towards sexual violence in the game. And that in games you mean? Not in games, but maybe real life. Oh okay, okay, real life. I, I have to say for a sort of like sexual um, violence what's the word against it like well, something that all club leaders have to do. So prevention, there we go. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so it's just like they were telling me there was like doing recordings, they show recordings or at actor plays, these people who had they don't believe themselves to have raped anybody. Mm -hmm. But then the way they phrased the question was like did, it re did you require to have your partner drink alcohol in order for them to participate in, in sex? And to said they've seen very, not innocent, but they're very confident in themselves that nothing got happened. And then one day that's the same idea, which is like, oh, they're just curious. Oh, they just want this as the was. I wonder, it's sort of a trap by saying, like, this is what Robert wants to feel, but at the same time, this is the same thing that many people mm -hmm. sort of thought process go through. Mm -hmm. Is it even more than this? Like we get some, but is it all just thinking and various kinds of torture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, is this a sex game? I mean, it's sexual, but it's a very, really particular kind of um, exploration of the power dynamic fetish. Sure, yes, yeah. violence. I didn't really see a lot of sex. I didn't even really see that much sexual connotation in. Well, That's, I mean, I mean, aside from the fact that well, the language, but the, the actual, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if that's the, like the, I mean, what, it's to tell what it's happened, we're not necessarily going, we just want to be on this, like, a sex act unless you want it to be. Well, exactly, that's what it's, so, it's you know, it's, it's yeah. yeah, yeah, and, and, uh, Ben and then, no. yeah, and then, I was just say, gonna say you could call it, Sexualized violence because that's basically what it is. It's, it's violence that is given the sexual connotation because you know it's like what is you know being searched for for like you know sexual satisfaction. Um, yeah, I think I'm jumping back to the concept of this as a game about the boundary between sex and violence. I think it's interesting that the game is also about the consequences of violating that boundary and the fact that those consequences don't just apply to your in-game character, they apply to the player. The yeah. player is restricted from the game rather than just sort of, you know, this this character uh, having to, you know, you know, two fictional characters, one of them is disappointed in the other fictional character. You as the player mm -hmm. are blocked from the game mm -hmm. because you did something wrong. Yeah. So. But I think the game is also about consent, and I would argue that I don't know if you're actually committing sexual violence before you've actually crossed that line of like violating the, the virtual submissive's boundaries, because if they're totally consenting and they're there for sexual gratification, which is why submissives are there, then yeah, you know, then I don't I mean, know. That was the, what the entire first part of the hand. Yeah, right. right. So yeah. I, I don't know necessarily we can say that it's like violence up until that point where you're actively blocking out what that person is instructing you or asking you to, to, to do or stop doing. Is there a quote unquote happy ending to the game? Um, I don't know. I, I, before I, I came here today, I played through it. The happy ending is you can do it again, uh -huh. I think. Um, well, and why? So why? Why? Because you followed the guidelines that you two set at the beginning of the game, so then you can do it again. And like, and if you like set it again, and you like, there's a uh, component where if you stop shaking his hand, it will go back, and like, it can change what you agree on. So you can have him wear nothing, or just his underwear, and it can be really hard spanking, or not much at all, and then it can change the safe word. Yeah. So we kind of went through it fast, but mm -hmm. that's just because it was like hard to, to, to navigate, and I just wanted you yeah. guys to try it and mm -hmm. go, go for it. Um, but yeah, there is this this, net, this negotiation mechanic, right, where you can negotiate those three words as Matthias was shaking the hand by moving the mouse, right? He was saying, okay, heavy, 
hard, you know, and this is the safe word. And if I say the safe word, stop, right? I mean, it's replicating this kind of real life uh, scenario um, in that way. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, I think, Matt, I think, I think I would agree. I would agree, you know, with what you're saying is like, and what you guys are saying about the violence is the start. It's not setting out to, to make you violent, right? It's as sort of said, like it's not about the violence. I mean, it's it's about if you cross that line, then it becomes violent, right? And then it becomes you're punishing the player by by crossing that line. So that's what does that say about the reality of the situation? Uh, I I don't know if this is totally answering your question, but I think the that that the, how this game make sex something you do rather than something you acquire is by treating the player themselves as an active participant in the sexual act rather than it just being, again, the player's fictional persona. Because the player has, the player becomes more involved with it on that level, I think that's why it makes the sexual act something you do rather than something you acquire. Yeah, um, I, yeah, for sure. Um, and I think that's kind of where I want to push this conversation, right, to, to actually think about, um, how your the player is actually interacting with it, right? So let's kind of think back. So what did you, you want to just explain what you did, all the actions you did? Okay, so I was doing this to shake their hand, to like negotiate uh, with them, uh, uh, like in terms of the sexual act, like the safe word and the whatever the response were, his clothing and the what was it? How hard? How hard I was gonna slap him, and then uh, I like, flipped, I flipped the mouse to actually slap him. Uh, is that it? Is that your answer? And then the and then the caressing. Oh, right, the caressing, and also clicking to click through dialogue. Can you look at the chat, Michael? I think wanted to say some things. You want to read that out? Yeah, uh, Michael's saying I'd love to see something where the physical act of interfacing with the game actually models sex. The mechanics that consider things like conservati, SM slash adventurousness slash consent slash violation, empathy, or communication. I'm reminded of a recent interaction, a uh, marketing campaign based on drowning, where the need to consent, con constantly push the keys to stay afloat really expresses the deep anxiety and physicality of the fatigue. Yeah, so that's that's a great example. But, so shaking his hand, I was doing this, which is not actually for you, obviously. Uh, I think that's kind of interesting. Um, just at the start of the game, you're masturbating, and then uh, you start taking the rest of the yeah, well, you're actually, you're, you're, I mean, in, in the sense, like, I guess the, the baseline point is, and I think this is kind of talking about what kind of Michael is kind of mentioning too, is that uh, the that you're not just clicking a link to go into sex, or, or you're seeing a scene, you're not seeing it. Yeah, yeah, and you're not, you're not actually put, you're, you're not like, the, the physical act of ha what's happening on the screen or it's implicating the player is being replicated in the control scheme, right? The, the, the game that Michael is referencing, I actually haven't played it, but um, it's a game where you actually have to keep clicking or keep posting up, keep posting, is he chatting? Like a Swedish one or something? Yeah, it's like keep Scandinavian or something. You have to like keep doing it, and if you, let, if you stop doing it, you drown, right? So that's the whole game. You just gotta keep pressing it, pressing the button. But it creates this anxiety because you're like, well, I, I'm gonna have to let go sometime, right? And if you're drowning, you're gonna have to let go sometime. Just pushing that to the physical space. Who called this a sex game, or is it just called that like, genre? Yeah, let me let me just rephrase this. It is a sex game. Well, it's not. A, it's not. Like, it's it's again. I'm using. Well, I'm using sex as. I'm using a sex as like not as like physical, like actual like penetrable, penetrable sex, right? Like it's more about intimacy and how we mechanize this kind of intimacy. I think sexual relations, right? But sexual like, relations. Yeah, like, I mean, S and M is a very Absolutely, yeah. it's totally particular. I mean, I think that's. I think that's. I mean, this is part of a suite of games. Too. <laughs> so actually, let's let's move on to to uh, another one of these games. So why don't you open uh, succulent? Where's that? At the bottom. Just the name of it. I'm just like, what is gonna happen? This is. I'm just like when I first saw this, I was like, I don't know how to feel. Yeah, why don't you switch to? Oh, great. Do it. Yeah. No, I was watching my two girls. Yes. Yeah. I describe also what's happening. Is that a corn dog or a No one knows. No one knows. It's a No one knows what it is. It's a deep game. What is happening? Uh, I'm just moving the mouse. In left to right, forward, backward. 
to certainly <laughs> oh, no, I'll have to take it out. Uh, take it out. It's it's disappointed. Disappointed. Disappointment. Okay. That part is gone. Yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking too. Brush it away. Never brush my teeth. I, mean, I also like the eyebrow raise. Oh, oh, we're we're in the back garden. Oh, shit. Oh, we're in the back garden. Uh, Does he ever eat the popsicle? Does it ever go away? No. Like, it looks like a corn dog. I mean, it is it, it, it melting? I know it gets what? smaller, but that's all. Is it melting? Oh, it is melting. Oh, yeah, melting. <laughs> no, there is a wind in this game. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh. There you go. Now it's like your way. I'm just watching his eyebrows here. So can you try to move this Party stopped. Music stopped. stopped. Play stopped. They weren't into it. Okay. There's no spasming. <laughs> the reality was not warping before yeah. I was. It's so okay. sad. About approximately how much time was that? Five minutes? Yeah. Five minutes? Oh, oh, three no. minutes? Two minutes? Does it feel two longer minutes? for you? It's not longer for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because I was doing it. Okay. So it's about two minutes, and when you put it in, it, and what happened is you put the thing in the mouth and kept it in his mouth. It was melting, and the music was building, and the lights were building, and they started dancing. Everything got blurry. Yeah. It got blurry, got psychedelic. <laughs> they were freaking out. Everything yeah. felt more intense. And then what happened? Very, very clear reach to a point. Orgasm, orgasmic imagery at the end. With <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm getting to here. Guys, draw drops. It's it's dripping drops, a lot. Like, Hanna Barbara, like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> jaw drop action. Jaw drop, yeah. When you, when you finished it, it was just like. Awesome. Would you say that was pleasurable? <laughs> not everybody was <laughs> not having <laughs> <that. laughs> But pleasure. I mean, I'm not saying set where you turned on by her. <laughs> I mean, you could be, you yeah. know, whatever. I mean, that's totally fine. Um, but but I think every, at least at the baseline, everybody was laughing and was engaging with it. And you were like, whoa, as it got like even more intense and weird, you're like, whoa. And everybody's like, ah, what's going on, right? <laughs> Orgasm. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's not like, obviously, it's not like 
there's a penis and it's ejaculating into a mouth, right? Like, and there's an orgasm, but but it's but it's actually abstracting the idea of an orgasm, right? It's abstracting that idea, and you're actually the one who's pushing it to happen, right? Yeah. Interesting. I kind of wonder what would have happened if just you just let it sit there and did nothing. Has anybody played like, it? Would there be that? some kind of like timeout or like? I doubt. I doubt. Like the UI would probably just leave you there. Like you, you actually have to like, like, initiate the act for anything to get going. Otherwise, the popsicle would not probably melt at all. Yeah. Yes. So does, does, does the popsicle melt at all? You're just like leaving it. Outside. I didn't notice it. But, yeah. I mean, you can open it again. If you want. That, I think that'd be hilarious. <laughs> just if you just. It's just not so. Is it? I I watched a Let's Play of them. Pretty oh, sure it's yeah. you have to actually like. Keep it, it in the mouth as long as you keep it in LP melting. It's, it's not there anymore. Oh, uh, if you hit back, if you hit back in the finder, it should be right there. If you go to uh, succulent Mac OS, oh, yeah. yep. Oh, I think yep. it's interesting yep. that you are in both places. Like, yeah, yes, yeah, so let's talk about that. You're the one who is like, so the other person, but you're also occupying their headspace. Like, you're experiencing bliss prize in the You're yeah. experiencing their headspace as you're making a conversation. I should get and why, that's why, why are there two people in the background? Or are they representing oh, your head? Yeah. I know that is the funniest part of the game. I, know. They were, I mean, the ego's pants. Okay, <laughs> so Sarah and Christine. I mean, if you... Uh, I was going to say, if you actually read his reasoning for, like, behind what he was making, he's, like, considering this something called, like, homo hop, which is, like, like I don't know, homoerotic like hip hop stuff, and if you look at a lot of the pictures that he puts up on his blog, it shows like these pictures of like these guys without wearing shirts and they're rapping and doing hip hop stuff, and like that's where he got the inspiration for that. And it's interesting because the song. music is by Arca, and Arca is like a dude makes music, and it's like really really heavily hip hop influenced, but it's also all about sex and like gender. <laughs> so Christine, you want to say something about that? Well, I mean, it's one of the things I noticed. They're totally fungible, right? You can swap it. Out to the guy up front and the same guy. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, I was wondering if that was just a refractive image of the same consciousness or are those supposed to be different guys? Are well, yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. I want to go back to that. Go to that. Go there. Basically, on his uh, statement, he talks about like the, the cloning of them because it is the same model that's in all three of those places that it's supposed to be about how. Um, in like mainstream American gay culture, the really only image of gay men that you see is of the athletic trim white guys who are, you know, like very fitting of stereotypical conventions of, of, of homosexuality. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to have those people be interchangeable to kind of reflect that, you know, since he is a, a gay person, I see, yeah. that, that, you know, this is the only image and, you know. Yeah, and so it's almost like it's kind of like pointing its finger at it, right? Like it's like kind of like, yeah. See, he said like it was supposed to be a response to Castro clone. Castro, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Castro, Castro. Uh, Michael is saying, does it always have? Oh, okay. Michael's Michael saying, he's saying, does it always have to be entertaining? I guess that question, which is already targeted at games at large, takes on greater urgency when you talk about sex. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a good question. I mean, I I think it doesn't always have to be right, but I think in this case. I think Robert's at, going after a different kind of audience, right? He's not going after like he's going after people to like have fun with this, but I think that's also part of the messaging, right? You're 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 orgasming, but also like, I mean, does anybody else have any thoughts? Like it, like it, like talking about the identity of like the uh, hetero or not homo, but like white, uh, uh, like fit male, and that's how how he's like a gay person of color. He like sees this as like the only image represented in like a lot of gay media, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, like, I don't know if it is really that fun. Like, you're just kind of like doing this with the mouse. It's not like that engaging, even though there's all this like flair and like, think there's all these things happening in this game. It's like fun to watch, but is it like fun to actually do? Like, is it actually fun to do? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I think, uh, I mean, I think we can, we can say that, that it's not, it's not mechanically complicated, right? right. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's not uh, entertaining and fun. Uh, so I don't know. I think it's interesting. It's an interesting question because we always think about learning the, the games that are kind of serious topics. That it also depends. Kind of, we're playing this in a large group setting and format. Would you? It's Ooh. depending. Like, would you look for this game alone? Like, would you go to like play this game by yourself? Would you get that same sort of gratification? Would you get a different sense of gratification if you were to play this?
this in a singular atmosphere? Hmm. Well, it's a good question. I think everybody would have a different response, right? I do want to set a, pre a, pre a precedent, though, that like, I mean, obviously, he's, he's making these games, a lot of these games like this. You know, it's not like a game you're going to play for 40 hours, right? Like, that's not the point. That's not the audience. That's the engagement. Yeah. Even so, like, if I'm, if I'm willing to spend, like, any amount of time, why should I go for this instead of some other indie game that can be just as long? Well, I think, I mean, there's, I mean, that's, I mean, that's a question that's hard to answer, right? I mean, like, this is like anything, like, why would you play this instead of that? But I think, like, I think, I think that's a kind of a hard question. But the point being is that, at least my point is saying that, like, the length doesn't really matter as much, and the mechanics don't matter as much, but really what matters is the intention of the author, right? So that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of what, if, if this is intention matching of the mechanics, and how do you feel implicated in the process? Um, and I think that's kind of his intention there. Um, Anybody else on this? Have any thoughts about this? I think I think this idea of refraction of, of self is actually really interesting too. And I think uh, hey, how you doing? Hi. Uh, grab a you can no, just sit, back there. Great. Or you can just sit down at the floor oh, if you want. Um, so uh, but I think it also has to do with limitations too, like of just like 3D models. It's like I'm sure there was probably a thought process back in the back of the mind too, but I mean we're thinking about um, making just this, I, this, I, this, 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 this game is really small and short, and <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. There might be a design limitation as well. But either way, I think uh, yeah. Did anybody else have any thoughts on this? Or yeah, yeah go ahead. I think you do things on this, like the mouse, and almost turn on, this, turn the sound up. Yeah, the sound up. It was just telling us to increase all of I think it's just telling us to turn the sound up. So like, turn it up. There's something interesting about all of yeah, I think, uh, and then if you pull it out, right? Pull it all the way out. It stops. It stops. Yeah. And so, Allison, do you want to say something? I was just going to say how interesting it was. The, um, you had it so hard to come through. This, <laughs> the color and the, like, specifically drawing your eye to the scene. It's complete blank white space except for the three characters. Um, the most obviously colored is the popsicle. And so your, your eyes immediately drawn to that. And then, of course, when you move it closer, then it zooms up and physically you cannot look at anything else even if there was anything in the background. Yeah. Yeah, put it back in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta put it better like that, right? And it has hands, right? On the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All of these to the right is one of the guys on board. Like, left and right guys. Yeah, I'll just try that. I don't think so, but I think as you go back, like as it goes, as it goes on, though, like they get more intense, right? So, oh, oh, okay. Well, like left guy, my oh, yeah, that's true. Where are you off the time? I don't have to go to the the speed. I assume it builds faster if you move I assume that's kind of why I'm doing it. But well, the music stays the same speed though, right? Yeah. No, but yeah, the melting place like, so the progression. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Let's get the tone. Stop and switch. We got the right. See what kind of posing we're doing. Oh, we just. <laughs> yeah. He's okay. He's so cool. Yeah. Um. I love like just take it out. Yeah, the guy in the red right I just like to right. <laughs> put it back in. I also like how the camera zooms out. Like it just gets more intense. <laughs> yeah. It was a slight. It was, it was a slight. Mm. Yeah. 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 Unexpected yeah. moments in games. I wish we had like four. Oh, yeah, the guy on the right. Because <laughs> <laughs> he keeps it so cool. Oh my like, god, his head. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, now I'm just going to throw it at you. This is so, this is so like, yeah. yeah. What are they doing? So yeah. why, why are we speaking like old crap? That's not an ancient oh. dialects. He know. says like in this idea. thing that someone suggested, yeah. like his friend suggested making the eyes like really dark and then he's like I like the satanic look and then he like devours you and I'm like okay <laughs> pretty sure that's what it's and supposed then, to be. <laughs> so what you become the hospital again? Like <laughs> metaphor, I don't know. Alright, um why don't we uh let's go with this
actually shift, but before that, um, did anybody read that article and, and can talk a little bit about like what he says in the article or anything like that? Uh, anything that you want to note that's of importance? Uh, he just talks about how well, then, he talks a lot about how like this game and like like these games, but specifically six shifts is just about how like what we've been talking about, how like sex in these games isn't like an achievable thing. It's just like a thing that takes place over time. Um, he kind of draws this thing about um, too. Uh, we talk about sex and means also like driving in games. He kind of talks about how when we depict driving, we always do the literal driving, but there's so many other parts of driving that we don't automate out or, or, or depict in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess you can kind of get an analogy to sex in that way that we focus on a very narrow activity in the whole sexual spectrum and then generalize that in our games. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, did anybody talk about uh, like the the um, the political aspects of this game that he talks about in the, in the essay. Uh, Stonewall Riot. Yeah. He talks about uh, Stonewall Riot. Well, he talks about, is it okay if I spoil the game a little bit? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, okay. so he says that uh, like 48% of the players of this game will, uh, the player will be uh, like pulled over by two like faceless uh, assault dressed cops. Um, and he talks about the Stonewall Riots, which were like New York City. I don't really know much about them, but they're like, uh, like a gay club was raided by cops basically and like uh, all these queer people uh, came out and like rioted and they like uh, revolted using like their like self-expression and like they started like making out and like embarrassing the NYPD. Uh, okay. uh, and that's basically it and talks about, um, uh, well that's that part. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, and it, it talks about too how um, like like in that whole self-expression thing that as a part of the game that you can basically make kissing faces with the police officers and that will prolong the amount of time that they're talking to you, which prolongs the amount of time that you aren't playing the game. Uh -huh. So like you're kind of voluntarily playing the game less often as like an act of civil disobedience against these you know, police officers. Yeah. Um, there's also um, yeah all of that, and then there's also much like in the this um, even more tightening the relationship between technology and the body. Mm -hmm. Because the game is called auto erotic, right? So it's called stick shift, yeah. Stick shift, sorry, but there's this auto eroticism. As, yeah, stick, stick shift, shift, the name of the blog is stick shift as activist auto erotica. Right, so there's like this masturbatory like, thing that's built into it um, that's channeled through technology, like your car. Yeah. That's been at the meta level of your mouse or however it can be operated. Mm -hmm. And then, um, um, which builds in a refractory period, as we talked about, like just the body having to rec recover from um, simulation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, I think this game is probably the, the closest one to kind of where we can actually see this kind of like you know mechanizing uh, sex and sexuality as a process that has like a duration. It doesn't. It doesn't just have. It's kind of what Matthias was saying too. It's like. It's not just about an event, right? Um, but it's about thing that happens over a certain period of time. And in this case, the whole game, right? So these are small games. Um, so let's just start. Let's just jump right in and, and play it. So why don't we get somebody? Does anybody want to play? Anybody want to play the game? Come on, anybody back there? You guys, you want to play? I'll play. All right, great. So I'm just gonna swap some swap seats. And I think you can just pull it on the on the on the dock down there. It should be already up. You just hold the mouse to the bottom. Nope. Yeah, it should pop. Yeah, there you go. And it's that blue. And then.
change the gears. Yeah. Sorry, I don't have a picture. You do So what are you saying about the colors? The colors on the page. Oh, yeah, I see where it says one. So once you yeah. get it up to that, you need to shift. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's, you may just talk about how some people are frustrated. Yeah. Because if you don't try to shift, this is like, what am I doing? Yeah. There are two ways of doing it. Four. So how far do I have to go up? See the where the one is? Right. Okay. So you want it to change the two ways. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't think he minds. I'm so frustrated. Yeah, he's having a good time. <laughs> places you will accelerate, you will finish, you will fulfill all your autoerotic fantasies and slumber peacefully while your car cools down, looking fluid into a wet spot cooling on the asphalt. This is where the in-game music track Cry Baby comes into play. It has a good rhythm to it, isn't to Cynthia Electro, and its lyrics speak about wanting your love. Obviously, he's talking about jerking off the car. 
But for 48% of playthroughs, the player will be stopped by two heavily armed police officers. Why 48%? The point of this is that being stopped or harassed by police isn't really your fault. In fact, it's more or less out of your control, an arbitrary chance operation. When you drive, it doesn't matter if you're driving completely safely and reasonably within the speed limit. You slow down anyway so you don't give the cops a reason. But deep down, you know that a cop doesn't need a reason to stop you and ruin your day. After all, police departments are well documented ticket, ticket quota um, to me. When somebody actually argues with a traffic ticket and wins, the internet applauds them because we all wish we could do that. The 48% chance to be interrupted is taken from a 2013 survey of the LGBT violence survivors who interact with police. Clearly, police abuse and brutality is still a very real issue for many LGBT people, and it's just that their basic safety loses political priority when weighed against whether your local neighborhood bigot forest will do your wedding flowers. Um, and so, I'm just going to skip a little bit down and I'm going to say, uh, okay, so when you, when you blow a kiss at the cops, it adds another 10 minutes to the penalty timer pictured in the middle. My hope is that players quickly embrace this, voluntarily adding more time and locking themselves out of the game longer as a form of protest. Ideally, you force the cops to detain you to absurd, absurd extremes. Imagine a gay car and its lover stopped by cops in the street, unmoving for days or even weeks. Um, and then he says, the use of a cooldown period refers back to my game, Hurt Me Plenty. Um, and then he gives a link to the code that you can actually use in a Unity game. But it also invokes Warhol's blowjob. The idea is to make the duration of the entire act felt, whether it's cops detain you for liking dick, or whether it's you and your car in the midst of a blitzful post-coital cuddle. Stick Shift aims to visualize sex and sexuality as an ongoing process that occupies durations, not merely as instantaneous events or sequence. So, what do you guys think about that? Okay. And so this is the developer saying. Okay? Yeah, this is Robert Yam, yeah. That's so interesting because when I was watching this game, it seemed like something like Suda 51 or like Swery would make. Like it, it has that specific, like silly, almost Japanese sense of humor. But it's like everything you were saying about the article makes absolute 100% sense. Like it's great that it has that sense of humor, but also has that layer of depth beneath it. Like it could be everything to everyone. Oh, well, that's interesting. So you're actually saying, like, even his writing style is actually reflecting his design style and the comedy that's actually his view. Yeah, a little like, bit. Yeah, he's like kind of tongue in cheek. He's talking about a serious thing. Yeah. That's interesting. I actually didn't thought about that. I think mm -hmm. that's interesting too how he calls it a gay car. Yeah. But, like, he like, gives it a sexual agency like that. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, also, uh, I think in this article, he refers to like these three games as like his gay trilogy. But in the first game, like, I think we all kind of jumped on the, oh, it said she or girl or whatever. We kind of jumped on the head or not. like, Bandwagon there, but he's identified all three of these games as like his gay trilogy. Oh sure, yeah. So I don't know, like thinking of like, oh, the gay car, like that makes me wonder, like, what does it mean when we put that label on a car or a thing? Oh, absolutely. I think it goes back to what you know you guys are saying about um, succulent, where it's like kind of reflecting back on like the kind of heteronormative practices, right? Where it's like he even says it in the essay, he references drive and he references the idea of going fast, and he's like. You know the, the the relation between driving and this kind of like sexual intimacy is like so so close. He even says it. He says driving uh, fundamentally, or actually, wait, um, he says the average Los Angeles resident probably spends more time with their car than their human family. You're always touching it, fiddling with mirrors, checking for scratches, wondering whether to bathe it, nibbling on, on the neck. There's a certain intimacy there, and the intimacy is what every car commercial tries to evoke. Your first car is like your first kiss. So he's obviously playing with this like intimacy with like by by almost like parody parodying like mainstream culture as well. So it also has that level of depth, I think, too. But um what did you feel about when you were playing it? I was like nervous, I didn't want to fuck up. Like <laughs> it was really high stress, and maybe that's because people were watching. Um I don't know, it felt it felt like there was like a learning group because like you you just like started the only thing I like responded to was me shaking my hand at first mm -hmm. and then Realize you have to click down, so it was kind of interesting. And then once you like learn, once I learned that, um, it got really stressful. And then I was really upset when I got pulled over because I thought I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. so. mm. What about the blowing kisses thing? That's almost like a taunt. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, like it's uh, that's. The game's already over, and you could press escape at any time. It'll take around the same amount of time to uh, to get back into the game, probably longer, even if you wait like that minute. But it's almost like a taunt, like a, if I may, like a fuck you to the cops exactly. at this lower level. I think so too. I think there was an intention. 
it, it's like, I don't want to say you're reductionist, but it's kind of interesting in the like all or nothing scenario that it presents there of like, oh, if you're stopped by the cops, you might as well call them the fuck off. It can't get any worse. It's like, you're still uh, like, I don't know, the, the penalty that's, that, that's like, it's just that still feels really, I don't know, it's coy, but it's coy in a way that like undersells the, like, the nuances of that situation. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Um, yeah. Um, well, I think it also, like, you're not just saying like, Fuck you to the cops. You're also sort of saying like fuck you to the game, because like you're choosing to not play this game. You're like, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna play a game for thirty hours, mm -hmm. you know, however long you do it. So it's like you're like in the authority figure. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, again, I think it kind of goes back to it's somewhat what Liam was kind of bringing up. There, it's like, like what is the intention here, right? Like, obviously, like as as it's it's not necessarily positioning itself as something you 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 buy to enjoy over a period of time, right? Like. I mean, even even in the game itself, like you can get this for free. I mean, you can pay like a little bit of money if you want to support the developers, but you can download these for free, right? So he's 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 positioning it as, and, and this is kind of an interesting thing that I'm kind of the whole discussion series kind of goes around. And it, the bigger topic is like, you know, how do we see these games positioned in relation to other games that we talked about today, right? Like even in the introductions, um, some of you mentioned games like this, but uh, there's a whole there's a whole new slew of people. Um, it's not new, new per se, but it's like, you know, the last like 10 years, I would say, are, are really coming back and pushing against the mainstream to say like, oh no, these are these are valid things too. Like these are things that you can play as like a poem, as you would read a poem or you read a short story. You're not gonna really return to it every day, um, but you might show somebody about it. You might show somebody, you might feel something. So it's just something that's I think is interesting to talk to think about. Did you want to say something about that? Oh, I don't know, I was just thinking like in talking about like relationships to games outside the sphere, like how do you make the game a like, uh, sex in a game like not an adventure cutscene or whatever? And I'm thinking like how do you even just tear away from like hot copy mod, press X, stay in the little green zone of the circle, like how do you de mini gamify like that whole process and still keep it in a context that it can be absorbed into a more like mainstream accessible oh, no. Point. Because I mean, like these are awesome games, but they're not going to be played beyond a very small sector of you know sure. people who, who are really into games. I, I agree. You know? well, I agree. So how do you transcend that and make it in a form that is digestible for, for more mainstream consumption? Yeah, I know that in Fahrenheit, or most people know by Paleo oh, yeah. Prophecy, there are sex scenes where you do have to do button prompts with the controller that technically would be this kind of idea of. Um, de cutsceneing sex, it's still a cutscene, which you actually have to do stuff to like you can just cut things, you can screw up and like it, it, will, it will end. But you have repercussions for not doing the ridiculous like prompts, mm -hmm. like Simon says, he made yeah, it <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, most of the game is yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 it's like the same prompt, and such. yeah. I think one of the issues in making these kind of games more mainstream is just one of the economics, so. There are games out there that are sex simulators, but they're they're by default somewhat pornographic, and as a result, they will not be sold. Oh well, sure, yeah. Like, there's, even there's an even to... if you have a game that's published by a publisher, Walmart, GameStop, Amazon, they're not going to sell it because it's free to you know. So, like to your point, like the idea of like ever seeing this kind of thing like more thoroughly explored and. and the AAA space is just not going to happen. But I think, what I think though, I, I, uh, do you want to go say it? Sure, it's not related to that. But okay. um, this may, I think my, what I think of when I'm looking at these three games uh, sort of in tandem with, the, with each other is a talk that was given by game designer Adrian McDonald, which was about queering games and queer games and what is a queer game. And the, the quote that's always stuck with me from watching that talk is we need to queer more than just the cover art. And talking about queer mechanics and um, games are, and, you know, a game is an experience created by rules. It's a system by definition. Systems are biased. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, uh, you know, in its style and in its mechanics. I think these games are trying to create a new, a new system. Yeah, I think that I, I think to Johnny's point, and it kind of bumps off yours as well. I think that you can. I think that there is a space for this kind of mechanical interaction in mainstream games. Again, like um, one of the big things that was really interesting to me and why I wanted to bring these games was that there's no like nudity, explicit nudity in the right? It's like nothing that's like explicitly pornographic, therefore it like kind of avoids that 
you know, it's definitely sexually charged, right? But it's not doing it to, to be like, uh, like uh, to, to cater to a specific kind of gaze, I think. Right, but my, my only report to that is that if you look at classification in lots of countries, even the game of Grand Theft Auto, which is far as I know, at least five didn't really contain any graphic nudity, it was actually banned simply because some of the implications. I think if there's a, it, you know, if there's a mechanic that implies sex, I think that that could really run up against some of these classification boards, which would say this is not going to be sold anywhere yeah. ever. And then maybe we should break, so, break the system. So, and then maybe you know, whatever, yeah. things like that. But sure. All right, so we'll go around. And to add on to his point, I think sometimes implications are even more important than the nudity, nudity itself, because uh, I just play through the order, and then there's a, a man's penis in it, but it's not in the sexual context. And that game just got a rated M, but if he was having sex, it would have gotten an AO rating if it was used in a sexual manner. The same way with... Uh, Grand Theft Auto Lost in the Damned, which was later put on a disc, even though it started digitally. There's also a non-sexual sexual situation, a man's penis in it. So it's uh it's sometimes the implication is what makes or breaks the uh whether it's sold or not. Yeah, and just to bounce off that, I mean this this also not just a game, right? Like this is part of a big or bigger cultural weird thing in our culture that's like sex is a bad thing, but you can shoot the guy's head off and it's fine. So it's a weird double standard, but that also going forward. Yeah. I was going to go towards um, more on the whole car commercial dynamic of, mm -hmm. in our culture, you know, sex is very taboo, but referencing sex is okay, or like implying it is okay. Like you see car commercials all the time of, you know, um, women in practically their underwear draping themselves of the car and saying like, if you get this car, women will love you. And um, to the point of succulent, I was reminded of this atrocious BK ads that there were out a while ago where um, they were advertising some sort of like um, foot long sandwich and they had like a woman pose with her mouth open like facing towards it like in a very phallic way. Um, so I, I, I think that we don't even need the nudity because we obviously get the message and this is a message that's pounded into us every day in real life even. Yeah, and I think I think that to, to that point as well. I think I think Robert's not only just saying like trying to figure out ways to mechanize it, but he's also again like this is all these are also like politically charged like you know punches back at the mainstream culture too. So it's like doing both at the same time. So I, I think yeah, I think you're right. Well, like in terms of like this whole like, classification issue and like how we like rate this content wise, like it, it uh, talking about like out of order, like I think like that it was like inappropriate to talk about that sex scene being. It is like acceptable because it's not shown. I mean, you hear this hardcore sex scene going on, but you just see the little end table or whatever. You don't actually see what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. And so that's deemed acceptable. But like, I wonder, is there something about like the interactive quality of a game that makes like, say, you know, if you're watching a movie like PG-13 rated sexual content by the virtue of you're interacting with this game and there's interchange that's going on, is that more like content worthy or ratings worthy of, of being a more severe rating because you're directly interacting with this medium as opposed to simply watching it? Mm -hmm. Anybody have any thoughts about that? Well, I suppose by doing a classification, you're just giving it a label. So by saying it's adults, then you're you're only giving it a sexual kind of classification. So perhaps keeping it not rated, but saying mention a warning that it is um you can just simply, I suppose there are games out there that use the non rated system and just like let you know that this game's not rated. And I think that might be one way, a better way of doing it. Because again, the idea, I don't think this is a game you should be selling, it's something to be experienced. And you don't really want to sell this sort of experience because you can do a lot more things with money. And I don't know if people would be willing to pay for something to do this. Well, that's an interesting question. I think things are shifting a little bit. They are, but then I assume that it is for the sake of experience as opposed to the sake of entertainment. I think for sure, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, I don't, I'm not having an answer or, or really, but, but I'm interested in, in where's that line between um, basically like somebody like, you know, say like somebody like Robert, like being able to make, make money off of this, but not in a way that's just surely to make money, but like, you know, you do, like you make art and you sell art, right? And you buy art. What's the difference? I guess it goes to like to what extent like the game is an art form, to what extent it's a commodity, because I think particularly in the AAA space there's this notion of like, yeah. well, 
I'm throwing down this many dollars. I want this many fun hours of entertainment per my dollar spent. And this, uh, if we can kind of break out of that system, then that's I think what we're going to be necessary when my life is really be negotiated. Yeah, I think just on that point, I don't know if Robert has one of these, but I know a lot of people who like Robert, like Robert's like contemporaries have this thing called Patreon, which is like, uh, it's like a thing where you like donate money to an artist for like, it's so it kind of like commodifies their like artistry and like them as an artist, but it doesn't really commodify like one piece of art. So you wouldn't be buying succulent, but you'd be paying money to Robert on a monthly basis and then you would make these games and you would like them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's there are problems with the Patreon model too, but yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's at least there's new ways of trying to think about how we exchange these things. Because again, I think, I'm not sure if it came up, I had to get across if it came up last week or if it came up in one of my classes, but um, the idea of like paying money for something is not necessarily evil, right? Like these people who are making making these things, it's like they should be paid to make these things, right? Like that's not bad. Um, but usually when we think about capital, we think about people just doing it because they want to make money. That's not always the case, right? So just yeah, something to keep in mind, I think. Um, Great. Uh, any other comments before? It's 7.30, so I kind of want to start wrapping it up, but anybody want to say anything else? Go ahead. I'm not sure this is a common response. I just spent a few cents out there, but I feel like the idea of making money or something like this experience is, isn't something that is on um, Robert's mind, because like I was sure. talking to game developers, and there's a lot of reason why they want to make it because they want to create an experience for sure. other people to play through. And it's not like, and I think if you want to make a game with the intent of making some money off of it, I feel that's very business like. And like, again, that I talk, the indies I've talked to, like for them, they make games so that they want people to experience their vision, their ideal vision. This is the same reason why some people like electric boy is seeing and making their own games. And that's why I think that the two topics of make of, um, Profits and making experience should be separate. And really, lots of that. Liam and oh, that. I was going to say, yeah, this kind of. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I, that's true. We also have to pay your rent. Like, yeah, and that's, I think, yeah. You know, I, I don't think that it's necessarily, like, totally nefarious and evil to have some idea about how, you know, the whole financial side of things comes into development because financing is a part of any project. And, I think that you know, for somebody to be sustainable as a creator, they need to be able to live sustainably too. And yeah. you know, not be worried about am I gonna you know lose rent this month? And there's and there's obviously privileged positions too. Yeah, nobody makes anything in a vacuum. So if there's a way to make money, like that's great. And we're not talking about making a profit. Like this is never gonna be like this is never gonna make a profit. But if you can make some of the money or the time that he spent, like whatever that is worth, back. That's a good thing for him, probably. Like Sounds I write, like right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, like I write short stories. You know, so if I like apply to a grant or something like that, or apply to a magazine that pays me for the short stories, like I'm not writing that story thinking to like paid, to yeah. get paid, but like, oh hey, I got paid for that. That's awesome. But I think, it, but I think, but at the, at the center of what you're saying though is like there is a difference between say. Um, a big publisher that puts out things doesn't care what it really feels like and it's just trying to do it because it's a business. Right? There is that, right? That's totally that. I don't think indies are literally thinking that way, right? I think that's what you're saying. But there is this element of they're still humans that still need to make money. So I mean I just I feel like this is an example that kind of kind of it's kind of more universal within the indie scene, especially when it comes to like capital versus experience or yeah, the in-game experience is journey. It's a fifteen dollar game, but the it's critic it's a fifteen dollar critically acclaimed game where you get a like what I was what I have seen and heard that a fantastic experience out of like it, it actually speaks to you. So I don't see why we have to only categorize it as like there's a lot of gray areas within the gaming industry that has to be recognized as well that there isn't just black capital and white experience. Yeah. I think I think that we're at a great point where that's actually we're really trying to engage with that that kind of thing. There's there's different multiple methods of painting and thinking about that. And it's a whole other topic, but yeah. All right, I think we gotta end it. Uh, so next week, um, I hope you guys come back. Uh, we're gonna do something with immersion and games that is more multiplayer experience. So we're gonna have some stuff like that.